Now, given that Kathleen Kennedy, John Watts, and Leslie Headland are all having big issues with the Acolyte and Skeleton crew, and how a lot of Disney executives have been coming in and regulating both shows by allowing John and Dave to take over roughly 40%, and we say roughly, of course, 40% for each show, to really kind of handle some of the scenes and at least make both of these shows somewhat of a decent actual installment for Disney+. Plus. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. Now, given that Kathleen Kennedy has really been talking a little bit more about the Acolyte lately and how she wants to shift away from everything created by George Lucas and the aesthetics of Star Wars that Lucas introduced to all of us as fans and how also... There's a lot of things happening with Skeleton Crew as well that's going to shift away from the philosophy of George Lucas. Now, some of that, thankfully, will be diminished because John and Dave are indeed on board, helping out and fixing some of the scenes for each show. But that brings us to the Acolyte and the latest big problematic situation that has occurred behind the scenes involving Kennedy... Leslie and the Disney executives, as well as Bob Iger, the CEO of all people, really getting in on all of this and trying to fix the last episode of the Acolyte series and why we may very well be facing yet another delay for the Acolyte. Let's get into it. Now, one thing about the Acolyte show, in case you guys did not know, the basics of the story or the plot is it's all about how Sith infiltrate the Jedi Order taking place, give or take, around 60 to 100 years before The Phantom Menace. They're not quite sure exactly how long before just yet, but they're estimating between 60 to 100 years before, basically toward the tail end of the High Republic era. Now, beyond all of that, with Disney and Lucasfilm having many issues with the Acolyte series due to Kathleen Kennedy creating so many setbacks and delays by making the wrong choices, of course, for the show, right now Disney executives are forcing a massive facelift to the show that may even delay the series further into 2024. Now, it's noted that the Acolyte series is under fire right now, being heavily criticized by Disney executives and the board, and are demanding Kathleen Kennedy to reshoot the entire episode 8 of the show. That, of course, being the last episode that is said to have the most canon-breaking moments against George Lucas's prequels. Episode 8 is said to run at a total of 61 minutes where it stands right now with all the footage shot, which is now going to be completely reshot by this June in studio. Both John and Dave are coming on board the final episode and have been pitching ideas and big name cameos to join the show. Now, it's described that the last episode is now being planned to have a time jump that comes closer to the events of The Phantom Menace. The pitch by John and Dave is that they would like to insert a major cameo of a young version of Palpatine, younger than how he was in Episode 1. This is a big-time pitch by John and Dave that is waiting for approval by Disney that they think will be crucial to fix the last episode and set up the relationship between Plagueis and Sidious. The last episode as it stands right now by Kennedy is described to escalate quickly and not in a good way, where the ending is described to be very sudden and making little to no sense at all between a Sith Lord female and a figure claiming to be Palpatine that has changed species from being a Mun to something else. Now let me just stop here quickly. Now, before I get to the next big piece about this development of what's happening with the Acolyte, one thing is for certain that is going on right now is that both Kennedy and Leslie Headland are dialing back on a lot of the retcons that they were establishing in the Acolyte toward the prequels, and some of which are being erased and deleted by John and Dave, thankfully, so there's a lot of work being poured into it in that sense. But the thing that a lot of fans are going to have a, pr a problem with the Acolyte is that it's reportedly full of canon-breaking moments against the prequels and just against the philosophy of Star Wars, right? Just what Star Wars is, is getting sabotaged by Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland. Now, the last episode actually was said to involve some very big change to Darth Plagueis from Star Wars Legends. Now, as you all know, under the Disney canon, we don't really know what Plagueis is like just yet. We only know that he exists in the canon, and that's it. 
but under Disney, we never really got a full official closure on what species he is. And basically what Leslie and Kathleen Kennedy did is that they are no longer making him a Mun species. All right, so this is all being deleted, by the way. There was a scene, we talked about this about, what, like four or six days ago, give or take, where you have the Sith Lord female character approaching a throne, and there's a character sitting on that throne that claims to be Plagueis, who looks like a mixture of Tor Valum, who, by the way, looks like a hammerhead shark, and Groot from the Marvel Cinematic Universe in texture. Basically, it's a combination of those two characters claiming to be Plagueis. Design-wise, Disney executives were not impressed. They felt it looked very odd. The CGI was very poor based on some of the preliminary post-production that they already did for the last episode of The Acolyte. And though it's not final, but for where it stands right now, even in the early segments of the CGI, it was reportedly to be very much lackluster, so to speak. So, now that this whole episode is being redone, and it had a lot more canon-breaking moments apart from that, because, you know, Plagueis is only a mun in Legends, so it's not necessarily canon-breaking there. But apart from that, there were other canon-breaking moments in Episode 8 of The Acolyte, a lot of which had to do with the Cosmic Force, the Midichlorians, uh, things to do with Anakin Skywalker as the Chosen One, stuff like that have all, you know, been going around for Episode 8. Anyways, moving on. Now, of course, on top of this, this is now being cancelled with John and Dave taking over quickly and finding if they can make these cameos work or not. The last episode also had an overload of comedy that was best described like a Kill Bill Volume 1 scene straight into Star Wars between the saber duels between the Sith and the Jedi. George Lucas will also be advising over the last episode of The Acolyte as well, where it stands today. Alright, so this is where Kathleen Kennedy has me. You don't throw in comedy into a Star Wars lightsaber duel, you just don't do it. Now, it works in other things by Quentin Tarantino, sure, you know, like Kill Bill or Django Unchained. It works because that's his overall style, right? Uh, that's his overall shtick, you know, when it comes to his movies. He is able to mix both comedy and action together properly because that's his style. Star Wars is not that style. It's not gonna have, for example, Darth Maul, you know, cracking jokes while he's fighting Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. It just does not work. It doesn't happen. So that's what Kathleen Kennedy was doing in the last episode of The Acolyte. And granted with it that we don't know who these characters are, so we can't, I guess, 100% judge anything, but I think we can because this is not meant for Star Wars, this type of comedy in these different scenarios, right? So anyways, fill me in below, guys, in the comments, you know, what you really think about the Acolytes so far, based on all of the problems and the setbacks and what's being reshot. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.